begin has a phenomenal story. And this story starts with a lot of the things that we've been talking about, and that's family. Kid has endured so many barriers, like many of, you, many of us in our lives have. Ken is a songwriter, he is a hip-hop artist. When Ken was a little child, his dad passed away when he was just five. And his mom died when he was nine years old, leaving him with his aunt. Ken spent a great deal of his childhood and young adult life in and out of county lockup. Long story short, Ken found himself getting involved in criminal activity and getting in trouble, not going to school, not listening to his teachers or his mentors, and he had to spend two years in prison. So Ken got out of prison. He changed his life around, God helped him. And now he's doing something that can impact thousands of youth. He has impacted thousands of youth. And so today he's going to come and he's going to sing a song and he's going to speak with you for about 20 minutes. And I want you to give him your undivided attention. That you can, you can get, you can, you can glean something from him that's going to help you to not only have a better day, but a better life. Ken, awesome. Give it up. Give it up. How y'all doing? Good. All right, so you just gave me a great introduction. All right, so what I want to ask is, uh, I think you asked me before, how many people want to be successful? All right, how many people want to make a lot of money? All right, so what I'm going to speak about is um, teaching you how to get there. And I need y'all to, to take this and I need y'all to apply it to your life. So, number one, what we're going to talk about is the people that you hang around plays a major role in your life. So one of the people that you hang around. And number two is it's never too late. All right, can anybody tell me the people that you hang around, what, what, what does that mean? Like, people that you hang around play a major role in your life. What happens if you hang around the wrong people? Go ahead. Hang around the wrong crowd. What about being around good people? End up in a successful and good place. All right, so this is what we're going to talk about. Before we get into this, I'm going to share this song, right? So I am a recording artist. I'm going to share one song off of my album. I want y'all to listen to the words because there's a message in the music. I do music with a message. So this song is called When Them Goons Come and Get You. Anybody know what the goon is? Yeah. All right, so this song is called When Them Goons Come and Get You. Fast money, fast life, you don't live no be no witnesses alive when they get to your home. That's what them goons thinking when they run off in your house. Kicking your door and bust your shawty in the mouth. Where well, that after you got it all beat up. That's all you drink before them chop and start shredding it all. Even you got it all you don't chop and still chop. And God forgive you for your sins before your body chop. Ain't no love, no but cast in the steel at all. The only promise that you get that's how the game go. If you in love with that code, I'm gonna break your heart. Because the truth is set you free. We bring you money and the fame, no man ain't no doubt. Pretty women, hold the doors, try to take you out. This the truth about that devil that you glorify. It's kill millions, death is that at all time. Huh? When the goons come to get you, ain't no running for your wide off. See the picture, gonna take a white chalk and goons drumming on you. You wanna sell coke? He's alive fast. When the goons come to get you, ain't no running for your line off. See the picture, gonna take a white chalk and goons drumming on you. Wanna sell coke? Use your life fast. My baby cousin never took his first breath. They tied his mama up, shot him to death while she was pregnant. Ain't no future selling coke. They tied my cousin up, put two in his throat. A crackhead'll take your life for a dime rock. My homie quit with 16, a fiend close shot. The goons lurking, watching every move and deal of make. It can be a family member, that's right in your face. Ain't no one to say, the ghetto is a war zone. You wanna lose your life, step out of brother too long. They gave my cousin 20 years, he's doing bad time. It was by the grace of God, he ain't dead, huh? 
But instead, I told you to leave that poop alone. Cause when them chapters get the drunk, then you'll be dead wrong. My suggestion is that you find another occupation. Cause when the goons come to get you, call that revelation. When the goons come to get you, ain't no one in front of your ride off, see the picture. Never take a white chop, the goons drumming on you. You wanna sell coke? Who's your life that? When the goons come to get you, ain't no one in front of your ride off, see the picture. Never take a white chop, the goons drumming on you. You wanna sell coke? Use your live fans. See these rappers and stuff, they glorify cocaine. But see, they ain't telling y'all about the drama that it brings. They ain't telling you about the goons that's coming and killing you and your family. So y'all gonna leave that coke alone. Thank y'all, the big book KO. Alright, so there's a message in the music. Can anybody tell me what that song was about? Go ahead, tell me what it was about. Hold on, wait, So if you hang around them, you're going to become a loser. You hang around winners, you're going to become a winner. 
Listen, if I knew what I knew right now, a nerd would have been my best friend. Do we have any nerds in here? A nerd? That's your nerd? Okay, listen. A nerd would have been my best friend. If I was y'all, I'd find me a nerd and I'd make that my best friend because a nerd going somewhere in life. See, we used to look at a nerd as a bad thing back in the days because it was our mindset. But by us looking at a nerd as a, as a bad thing, we the one ended up in jail and in prison because of our mindset. But if I knew what I know right now, a nerd would have been my best friend because them are the ones that's going to be running the country. Them are the ones that's going to be having business. Y'all say I want to make a lot of money. Them the ones that's going to have the money. Because they're getting that education. And education is, is the key. Knowledge is power. You got to get your education. You got to stay in school. Stay in school to get your education. See, I messed up big time by dropping out of school. I should have stayed in school and got my education. So I was robbing. I was stealing, doing all that crazy stuff. And I found myself in and out of jail all my teenage years. I ended up going to prison at 19 years old, man. And I was, when I was in prison at 19, the guards, they talked to me in a kind of way. They spit in my face. Oh. They told me when to eat, when to take a bath, when to take a shower. They talked about my mama. And I'm telling you, when we was in the shower, guess who we had to stand next to but they could take a shower? <laughs> other dudes. I'm talking about standing in the other dudes right there. You right there, y'all take a shower together. Who want to take showers with dudes? There's some people that want to keep going back so they can keep taking showers with these dudes. Nobody want to take showers with these dudes. Y'all say y'all want to be successful, man. That ain't being successful when you got to take showers with dudes. So when I was in there, I ended up going to work release. We used to be on, we used to crowd, we used to be outside on the wreck yard. Everybody would crowd around. You would have somebody beating on the table and making the beats. And I would be in the middle rapping. And when I would be rapping, the guy would be like, KO, when you get out there, don't let it go, don't let it go. I said, when I get out, they gonna let it go, bro. So now I'm in work release. I got a cousin. He was back at home. He ended up calling my girlfriend and told her to have me to give him a call. See, before I went in, he was a small time drug dealer. He wasn't no big time drug dealer. But while I was in there, he actually became a big time drug dealer, kind of like how Biggie Smalls had them blew up. And he was looking just like Biggie Smalls, big everything. Dressed like him and everything. He was like, Cuz, he said, when you get out, I'm gonna put you on. I'm gonna put you on. So here I am, all happy, walking around the compound, telling all my homeboys, yo, when y'all get out, y'all need to come holler at me. I'm gonna be on strong. I'm gonna be on strong. Here I am, happy about getting up, hooking up with the same kind of people that had me in the trouble I was already in. I was happy about getting out, hooking up with somebody that didn't want anything out of life. I was still trapped inside of a mental prison. And see, it's a lot of y'all still trapped inside of a mental prison. You still hooking up with people that want to do drugs, smoke weed all day, party and pop pills, don't want to go to school. And I found myself hooking back up with my cousin when I got out. And just like he said, he put me on. And we became some big time drug dealers. I'm talking about buying keys. And we was down in Melbourne, Florida at this time where I was living at. Now, my cousin and I, we lived together with his girlfriend and my girlfriend. I was taking my money and investing into the music business. Like I said, I was going to do. So I started investing my money into the music business. I started opening up for all these major artists. Opening up for Lil Wayne, Juvenile, doing songs with Pastor Troy, songs with Field Ball. And I started traveling all over the Southeast, selling my music out of my trunk. One day, my girlfriend at the time, she was like, listen, baby. She said, let's go to Atlanta, move to Atlanta, leave this game alone, and let's go start a new life. But she was already shook up. She had a, 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 a baby daddy already up in the feds. So she already knew how the game went. So she was like, let's just leave, go to Atlanta, start a new life. But I'm like, no, baby, I don't know about that. Because here I am making five, ten, fifteen thousand $15,000 a day. Why do I want to leave this lifestyle, making all this money, and go to Atlanta to get a job? So I said, I ain't know about that. So she kept on telling me that, she kept talking about it. I made a decision to say, you know what? I do want to leave this lifestyle alone. And I want to do something for myself. I want to become somebody. I'm tired of looking over my shoulders, looking over my back, in and out of jail, going to prison, they wind up dead one day. So I ended up going, going up there with them. Now I'm in Atlanta. 
I get a call. Four o'clock in the morning from the police station. Hey, you need to come back down here to Florida to help to actually say Palm Bay, Florida. You need to come back down here to Palm Bay, Florida. There's been a shooting. We didn't even need to question you. They told me that my cousin had been shot, so I jumped up. I punched the hole in the wall, boom, through the hotel wall. My girl said, baby, we got to go. We get up and we start heading back down to Florida. Now before I get up, before I get to Florida, some people in my family had it already got together and they went and shot the boys, mama house up there, shot my cousin. Okay. See what had happened was they went into the house and they grabbed my cousin and just picked them at the mama. And they had them on their knees execution style like this. Now my cousin prayed that baby mama, she was she was um, she was like six months pregnant, right? So she right here, he right here. They standing over them, they start asking them, asking my cousin, where's the drugs? My cousin telling them I don't have no drugs, they don't know what you're talking about. They begin to shoot his girlfriend 14 times. They shoot all in the arm, pow, 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 pow. Last shot they shot in the head, pow. So she falls over and she's in my cousin's arm, my cousin got her. So she, she, she's shaking, she's shaking, and she, she, she's drooling up the mouth, eyes rolling back. He's telling her, baby, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay. No one is not gonna be okay. She just got shot 14 times and one in the head. It's not gonna be okay. So when he, he, when he looked up to ask them, why did y'all do this? As soon as he looked up and said, why did y'all, bop, bop, they shot him twice in the face, one right there, one right there. He falls over. Few minutes later, by the grace of God, my cousin said he gets up, he makes his way up out the room, out the, out the closet, and he falls on the bed. He know he shot, but he don't know where he shot at. He said he see the blood all over the bed. He said when he gets up, he makes his way out the room into the hall. He, he struggled down the hallway on the wall, and he makes his way to the kitchen. He ended up calling the police. And after all that, that's why I was getting a call, and that's why my cousin and uh, some of my family, they had got together and did what they did. By the grace of God, they went and shot these people mama house up. Didn't nobody get killed. But see, that's why I tell y'all, man, what you do don't only affect you, it affects your loved ones. Because if you go out there and do something stupid and they can't find you, they come to get your mom, they come to get your dad, they come to get your auntie, your little baby, they don't even care who it is, man. They come to get it all because of what you did. So what you do don't only affect you, it affects your loved ones. And y'all women, Y'all like to deal with these drug dealers and stuff because y'all want the money. Y'all want the prestige. Y'all want to ride in the nice cars. But guess what? If them drug dealers life in danger and they come in and walk them drug dealers, guess what's going to happen? They're going to shoot you too. They, why, why would they let you go? Why would they let you go so you can go tell them? They take everybody out. So that's what y'all got to make wise choices. Y'all got to think about what y'all doing. So by the time I get back, a couple, a couple weeks after that, they end up, the boys end up catching, um, turning themselves in. And I jumped back into the game. You would think after all this, in and out of jail, my cousin and his pregnant baby mama get shot, that I knew God was giving me a wake-up call. Like, can you my son, you got to chill. I didn't answer that wake-up call. I went back to the streets. So I want to ask you, what wake-up call do you have in your life that you're not answering? Something happened in your life too. That was your wake up call. And you ain't answering. What's your wake up call? What did you push news on? I jumped back in the game. I ended up changing my life. And now, after giving it to the higher power, I ended up changing my life. And now I'm an owner of a trucking company with two trucks. I'm an author, motivational speaker. I have a youth program where I work with youth. So I want to tell you that it's never too late. Whatever you've been through in your life, whatever you've done, it's never too late. But I want to tell you most of all, to make the right decisions in life. Getting around the right people, man, that's what it starts with. The people you hang around. You hang around somebody that don't want to go to school, man, that's trying to make you skip school, when school is very important. School gives you the knowledge and education you need to teach you people skills. You're going to need it. Just, just go. Some stuff you may not use. Some stuff you will use. Just get all the information that you can. 
and use that information. If you want to be a doctor or a lawyer, of course you're not going to go to school, you're not going to go to college. So it's things you have to do. So to be successful, all right, so I got my own trucking company, to be successful, number one, you have to figure out what is it that you want out of life. See, so many people go through life not knowing. So they make so many mistakes. They go through life like an accident because they don't know what they want. When I was in prison, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a Christian rapper with my own record label. That was my goal. I knew exactly what I wanted. And see, now I got to figure out what is it that y'all want. And once you figure out what is it that you want, number two, you got to figure out how are you going to get there? How am I going to accomplish this goal? How am I going to get where I need to get to? Listen, you might have to take courses. You might have to take classes. You might have to get with mentors. You might have to read. You might have to Google some stuff. You might have to get on YouTube. But I, if I wanted to be, when I wanted to be a Christian rapper with my own record label, my goal was getting there was I needed money, right? It takes big money when you're trying to run a record label, and you're the artist and you're the owner, because you got to put money into CDs, you got to pay for promotion, you got to pay for advertising, you got to pay for a, 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 a promoter, a radio promoter. You get so much stuff that goes into touring. You got to pay for all that when you're the owner and you're the artist. So I know I need a job that will make a lot of money. And I ain't talking about no McDonald's money. I ain't talking about no Burger King, none of that kind of money. I need a good job that will make some money so I can invest into what I want. So I have to figure out what is it that I want. Number three, I can have once I figure out what I to do. Next one was hard work. You have to be willing to give it everything you got. I filled out over 100 applications. Everybody was turning me down because of my background. But my purpose was bigger than the adversity and opposition. That's why I couldn't quit. It was bigger than me. And see, the problem with a lot of y'all today is when y'all feel things are getting too hard, y'all quit. And that becomes your norm. Impose a will on it. Make it do what you want it to do. Y'all got to understand, man. There's people counting on you to make your mama. Your dad, your auntie, your teacher, your principal. It's just not about you. Stop being selfish. The next, number four, is sacrifice. You got to be willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have things tomorrow others won't have. When others was partying, Hanging out with family, making babies, drinking and smoking weed, watching TV, and all other unproductive activities. I was grinding, driving my tractor trailer from coast to coast, New York to California. When I got my first load, they sent me through the mountains. I ain't even know I was supposed to downshift going up and down the mountains. I had to call my cousin. I ain't know I was supposed to downshift because I had never been trained how to downshift. I just jumped out there on feet. I want to be successful bad. Like my mentor E.T. said, when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. I have a strong determination to succeed. No matter the opposition, I was willing to fail in a huge way by risking my life driving through the mountains with no experience. You have to be willing to fail. You have to be working when they're sleeping. You got to be grinding when they're taking off and going home. You still grinding. You can't do what everyone else is doing and expect to be successful. You have to be different because you are. You are great. And greatness requires a different level of human being and sacrifice. Number five is self-discipline. The ability to do the things you know you're supposed to be doing, even though you don't even feel like it. There were times I had to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning to start driving my tractor trailer 11 hours straight. Was it hard? Yeah, it was hard. Not only was it hard, I had to sacrifice sleep. But I love success more than sleep. And if you're going to be successful, you got to be willing to give up sleep. You got to be willing to put that phone down, turn off the video games, turn off the TV, and get to work. Even though you don't even feel like it. If you're willing to do everything I just told you to do, You'll be successful. You got to be willing to tell your homeboys, listen, man, I can't hang out with y'all tonight. No, not tonight. I need to study so I can be successful. 
You gotta be willing to tell your girlfriend or your boyfriend, listen baby, we can't hang out tonight. We can't go out on a date tonight. No, not tonight. I need to study so I can be successful. So I can provide a better life for the both of us. If y'all do what I just told you to do tonight, may y'all be successful. Hey listen, I thank y'all for your time. I'm your big bro, KO, thank y'all. Thank you so much for coming out. And